Hello my fellow gardening gals and guys, welcome back to my channel, Serenity Now Garden. My name's Jeannie and I garden in a zone 4B. So we're going to do another garden tour today. I broke it up into three parts. So this is going to be the backyard and right now my backyard is like peak backyard right now because I have a bunch of astobe that are blooming and I want to take you on that tour before they kind of fizzle out. So we'll just kind of go around. There's Part of it is a work in progress, so please keep that in mind, but I hope you guys enjoy. So if you like garden tours, please give me a thumbs up so I know and consider subscribing to my channel. It would really help me out. And happy gardening, guys. Okay, guys, welcome to my backyard. So we'll start here. Now, this is a work in progress back here. Please keep in mind, we had a bunch of buckthorn removed and we're also adding a fenced in vegetable garden. So I'll kind of show you as we go, but it's peak astobe time. So I believe this one is visions in red. Um, just gorgeous. I had, this is the reason why I had to do this video when I had to do it because all the astobes are blooming, but the first ones that started blooming are just on their way out so I had to catch this so let's start over here um, now we have I believe this is called rhythm and blues we have a lot of these are called rhythm and blues or drum and bass or visions like this one is the visions I believe and we have an American elder or common elderberry this is a native we want to create a living hedge here um, privacy hedge um, so we have a couple of those in, more still be. That's a pyracantha there, Yukon Bell, just to create that hedge. And another common elder on the right. And check this one out. This is the only one I have of this kind. I do not know what it is called, but it just, just those little blooms just puff up. Like as soon as they open, it's just gorgeous. Ah, isn't that a picture? I just love the Sun Kings popping there. This is Common Elder. This was here. This is a native here, and it's blooming now. So it gets these white blooms, and it spreads. So I really want this to go in between me and my neighbor's yard, kind of hide their chain link fence, and just create a little privacy. But it's pretty. You don't have to water them. You don't have to fertilize. Nothing. That's the great thing about natives. All right, so back to the astobe and hosta bed here. And just check that out. Some of these are almost as tall as me. And I'm five foot, five foot tall. So we got the Sun King in back there. More hostas in the front. We also have some chocolate chip ajuga in the front. Um, it's already bloomed. So it's just uh, it's a good ground cover. Could keep some of those weeds out. That's another visions. This was our first hosta, or our first astobe. This was here with the house. It was in front. It didn't like it in front. So I brought it in back here where the water table is high. And boy, do they love moisture. They could be sitting in water in the spring and still look good um, come July when they bloom. So yeah, doesn't it look great next to the yellow of the Sun King though? I highly recommend those planting those two plants together because they're they both love moisture and they both love shade. Some of mine are in uh, pretty partial to full sun though. This is mighty pip, I believe this is called. This is the really tall one, and look at it's still not done blooming yet. Like if you look at the very top of these um, flower spikes, none of those are open yet, so they'll all puff up like that pink. I love this one. I wish these bloomed for so much longer. These only bloom for like two to three weeks. And we got a blue hosta there. I'm not sure what it's called. A penstemon on the right of that. That penstemon's first year. I believe this one's called Husker Red. So it'll get a lot bigger. But it attracts the hummingbirds. And it's been blooming for a while. So if you like hummingbirds, plant a penstemon. This one, I believe, is drum and bass or rhythm and blues, one of those. Um, it's just on its way out. If you look at the bottom of each plant sp or uh, flower spike, it's kind of just on their way out there, Yeah, unfortunately. So those were the first to bloom, and they're the first to go. Just about two and a half weeks. 
and more hosta. That is first year Siberian iris. It's called a kaboom. So I have a Siberian iris on each side of this little path that goes back into our woods there. So there's a little sun king. Second year for that, so it's still a little guy. And then there's a Baptisia in the back, so that'll get four feet tall. Those aren't shrubs. Those are uh, perennials. But they have a really deep tap root. And yeah, got another Siberian iris there. Like I said, this is going to be a path in between here leading out to the back. So I'm keeping that open. This is a newly planted up area. We got some snowball bush viburnums. We have four of those in back. There's some. This is the cranberry. Oh, no, wait. The burgundy glow ajuga. That's what it's called. So I like this variety the best. It's got the best all year color. And there's another first year pensamen. I believe that's uh, dark towers. Look at this. This is a matcha ball false spirea. It's just starting to bud. So these will have little white flowers. These stay pretty compact, like three by three. But look at the leaf structure. They're just so cool. Really like that. That's a first additions. So here's my snowball bush viburnum. So I have four of these. These are my distressed clearance finds on the Lowe's clearance rack for $5 each. These will get like 6 to 10 feet tall and wide. Yeah, great finds. They don't look distressed at all anymore. <laughs> and that's another Baptisia there. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of let this area breathe back here because we just removed tons of buckthorn and we'll just see how that goes. There's a fragrant bouquet hasta or penstemon, another still bee. Oh, those pink still bees are just so precious. <laughs> that is a little spark spirea. These look great in the spring. There's some angelonia. It's a Francis Williams hosta there. We have a bunch of ajuga back here, just kind of suppressing the buckthorn seedlings. Check out all these blooms on the sum and substance. This is like in full sun because I lost two trees this year. It is doing great. I have to keep this sprayed with liquid fence though, or the deer will just demolish this whole area. And we have another Francis Williams. Those get quite large. Check out the leaves on this. And the pollinators love these uh, flowers. There's bumblebees that are always hovering back here. Huge leaf. Slugs don't bother these. And another mighty pip. That's the four and a half feet tall one. Doesn't look good next to these two hostas. Got some in substance and halcyon. Don't mind the big root ball in back. Those are the trees that fell. So we're slowly cutting that all up, and hopefully that'll be nice and flat back there sooner or later. But look at these still have a little ways to go. They have a couple more blooms that are going to open there, so we'll get all puffy. So that process takes about a week. Love it. So just behind that root ball is going to be where our vegetable garden is. And this is another, I believe, Rhythm and Blues. Um, as you can see, this one's on its way out. So this is what it looks like when it starts to just, um, yeah, just be done for the year. It's sad. It just goes way too fast. It still looks good, but it'll get brown in the next week. It's starting to on the bottom there. It's just not as vibrant anymore. I love those still bees, though. And we got... Uh, that was a fragrant bouquet hosta, some Veronica first year, and just some run-of-the-mill variegated hosta I have all over my yard because I split like five plants into like 50. This is a ostrich plume, um, a still bee. These kind of like weep instead of stand straight up. And we got my golden curls willow here. This is year three or four. Just to kind of soak up some of the moisture since the water table is so high. It's so cool, the corkscrew pattern on these branches. So it's loving life back here. And let me show you the showy mountain ash. It has berries on it now that are going to turn bright orange. And look, it's getting attacked by Japanese beetles. So I just discovered this. So shortly after this video, I had to tend to that. 
and just in the back of my yard here. It's nothing uh, too great right now. There's a bunch of Millennium Alliums. I have plans for this area, but not for a year or two. I have to keep those secret though because I don't want my husband to get overwhelmed if I tell him <laughs> what I want to do back here. <laughs> so yeah, those are going to bloom in about another week or two. I can't wait. And we have some just around the corner here. This is a really hot area. Hot, hot, hot afternoon sun. And the stone crop seed. I love it here. This is autumn joy. And there's a thunderhead that's smaller. So I kind of repeated that pattern down the wall there. They love it here. So yeah, the sun just kind of beams down. And these will take what anything. These uh, thunderhead sedum, they get a little more um, purple. They'll have like purple stems and purple flowers. So, And I have also a, two rows of lilacs, just common lilacs. I planted these just when they were so tiny, 75 cents each. I think they're on your four here. So that's my neighbor's yard to the right there. So that's fenced in. Maybe one day they'll let me do a garden tour of their yard too. So we'll see. But I hope you guys like my backyard. Happy gardening, guys. We'll see you in the next one.